You know, it's very important toward the beginning of the school year to make sure that the students understand parts of the nature of science and that you incorporate this throughout the entire year. I have another hobby. I am a professional magician, so I like to do this kind of activity. And I'll talk about what you could do if you don't have access to something like this. But let me show you an example. What does a good scientist have to do? They have to make observations. So let's look at this. I have a metal tube with four pom-poms. I have a white pom-pom hooked to a red pom-pom. Well, look at this. As I pull the red pom-pom up, the white pom-pom moves up. As a scientist, you have to make observations. You're observing. But also, as a good scientist, you have to make predictions and possible explanations. What could possibly explain how pulling up the red pom-pom pulls up the white pom-pom? I think that's pretty easy to explain, so let's maybe enhance the difficulty. Over here, I have a blue pom-pom hooked to a green pom-pom. But it's real interesting because the green pom-pom is also hooked to the white pom-pom. But as I said, the green pom-pom is hooked to the blue pom-pom. Hmm. Wonder if there's any plausible explanations for that. How in the world could the blue pom-pom be hooked to the green pom-pom? But also, did you know that the green pom-pom is hooked to the red pom-pom? Which was, as I said, hooked to the white pom-pom. Which hooks to the blue, which hooks to the green. And we could go through this whole process, but what's real interesting is that's also hooked to the white. And then as I think about it, you think that there's nothing in between. And now all of a sudden, you're in a quandary. How, as a good scientist, do you offer an explanation for this? We're not necessarily after the right answer. All we're after is an answer that would explain this particular set of observations. I've done this for many people, and they've come up with explanations which do not explain how I do it. But for them, it would work. And that's all we want in science. Science does not always have the answers. It's like on a jury. If you're a jury member, you're looking at the evidence, and you're trying to see if this person is guilty or innocent, and there is no answer book, you can go check and see. Are you right or are you wrong? You just have to take the evidence and put it all together and see if you can come up with a verdict. And so as scientists, and the nature of science, we want to make our observations, we want to make our predictions, and our possible explanations knowing sometimes, as in cutting-edge research, there is no answer book that we can go to to see if we are right. You just have to continue doing the experimentation and see if you can repeat the results that you've seen. And if you can repeat it enough, you have come up with brand new science. So hopefully this year, you can come up with some brand new science. Thank you.